The Speaker recognizes the Honorable Stacey Irwin Oaks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It has been said that in life two things are promised, death and taxes. Well, if you have the honor of being elected as a legislator with term limits, you can add to that list the end of your legislative service. Now, that end can come sooner if you are defeated in a subsequent election, but the end will inevitably come. Most people like to hear themselves speak as opposed to listening to others. So this speech will have a beginning, middle, and end, and I will keep them as close together as possible as to not lose listeners along the way. My service started in lame duck of 2010, class of two, which included Mike Shirky. We discovered that the chairs, although only graced by a few, were not comfortable at all as we glared across the room at each other after sitting for nine hours. Before long, I saw Mike standing and leveraging himself with a stack of books. On a good note, I had the distinct pleasure of being able to say I served in the majority, where I passed a resolution and discharged a bill out of committee that became law. That was an awesome two weeks. Thank you, Andy Dillon, for the delusional state of euphoria that I took into my first term in the minority. It was time to get the expungement bill done that I had worked on as a staffer eight years ago. I was affectionately called the Rain Man by Rep. Hadman, and I think I almost made Rep. Walsh curse me as I attempted to get a hearing on the expungement bill. How, how hard it was to realize that I was not in the majority anymore. I did figure it out, Rep. Walsh. I would apologize, but my advocacy was sincere even if my passion was misguided. Thanks, Rep. Hamill and team, for your patience. Over the next two years, I found myself growing hardened. The sergeants would ask, why wasn't I smiling? Thanks for caring, sergeants. I was still grieving the death of a brother in 2011 while preparing to bury a father in 2012. It wasn't fair. I had already lost a sister to cancer and a nephew. Through that experience, I drew closer to certain members, staff, and lobbyists. I learned of others who had lost a sibling, a child, a child who had gone missing, who had lost a parent, those who were adopted, and those who had children who were ill, and those who suffered illness themselves. Those things put many things in perspective. My two seatmates provided me with some protection and it kept me busy as I sat between them, teaching them how to use their newly discovered electronics. Woodrow, you and Bledsoe are good men, even if you are technically challenged. <laughs> Thank you to Tommy Stallworth for allowing me to be your vice chair for the Black Caucus. Thank you, Tim Grimel, for naming me your minority whip and all the associate whips, Diane Slavin, Rep. Kozowski, and Rep. Duraney, and the policy and communication staff for your service to the caucus. To my staff, Roland Anderson and Sharon Floyd, who started with me and finished with me, thank you. Thank you to Dan Opsomer, and I promise to keep working towards autism awareness. To Clerk Randall, FM is an acronym for emergency financial manager. <laughs> Mom, I know, Mom, I now have more time to spend with you and I will always cherish Mondays with Mom, Maggie Irwin. Thank you to my husband, Michael Lynn Oaks, for allowing me to serve as we raise Michael Lynn and Kingston Lynn Oaks. Mama's coming home. Yours in service, Stacy Lynn Irwin Oaks. <laughs>